I was 22, so I hadn't really done that much, I guess. I'd done theatre and, and fr fringe theatre with um, actually Chris Renard and Frank Clark, the director and writer. And that led to a part in Brookside. And then I was in Brookside for uh, about a year. So I'd done that and then straight on to Brezhnev. I started as a child actor, um, 14, um, doing children's television series, a couple of those. Then um, turned legit, joined the National Theatre and um, went to America, did some things, stints on Broadway and then finally culminating in Letter to Brezhnev in 1984 <laughs> um, in Liverpool. Sandra knew Chris and the director, Chris Bernard, and yeah, Frank Clark, uh -huh. the writer. Yeah. And I'd met them both too, socially really, because we were in the same kind of crowd, weren't we? Even mm. though they were mm. Liverpool and I was based in London, there was some sort of yeah. north-south traffic there. Yeah, connection. Um, so it was mates, we were mates really, weren't mm. we? That's yeah. how yeah. it came that we were all yeah. involved. It's kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was I've more got... about bringing together people you knew. I mean, Frank had got the idea to do the film and then just kind of pulled together all the people he knew. I yeah, think, really it's like, well, you know, I've got a about. piano, he's got a barn, let's put on a show. <laughs> I mean, outside of Brookside at that time in Liverpool, um, there was very little. Uh, there was like a programme called Look North, but that was all in Manchester. But actually mm. in Liverpool, uh, there was little if nothing else other than uh, Mersey TV. I don't know if Frank was inspired to go on and do a film, having because he was a writer on Brookside, and I think it was while he was a writer on Brookside that he decided that he wanted to do a, a film, and then. Chris Bernard was directing episodes of Brookside, and of course I've been in it, um, but there were people that he met, you know, from the technical side, like the um, focus puller and stuff like that. It was quite a big deal to make mm. a film in Liverpool. And it's not like these days when you can make a blockbuster in your bedroom. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a big deal in those. There's a lot involved, a lot of equipment and people and, and commitment. Yeah. So Liverpool wasn't used to it. And I think I think also it was because it was about Liverpool because people had used Liverpool, um, you know the sort of the, the, the um, Georgian streets. It's been, it's been used as a location uh, for films and still is a lot. But it was because it was about Liverpool at that time. It was a very original story, it was, wasn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. basic premises: Russian sailor meets Liverpool girl. They fall in love, but she can't. They can't do anything about it because of the Iron Curtain. Yeah, I mean, Russia then was this big, you know, the, the, the Cold War was very much still still on, and it was like this big mysterious place, scary place. So it was, it was very attractive because of that. Yeah. Um, There's that great line, knit yourself an Iron Curtain. He's, I'll give you a ball of steel wool, and you can knit yourself an Iron Curtain. That's not, right, that's not exactly Isn't it. <laughs> See, I remember the line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Like, go, why don't you go and knit yourself an iron curtain? That's right. That's what I say to my mother when she's trying to stop me going to Russia. Yeah, it's so it had, coming a, back. had a real originality. <laughs> and, um, and Frank, of course, was a, a beginner himself, Frank Clark, and was very open, amenable to any suggestions. He always took things on board, didn't he? That, yeah. Although there wasn't that much that, um, that, no. that, that was that we offered or wanted to change in the script. Well, you were it? actually thinking about it, though. You were the only person that had been in a film before. I mean, you were the, the mm. professional, really. He was the only one that kind of knew what to do. <laughs> well, the only one who'd done it before, anyway. Only one who'd done it before, certainly. <laughs> yeah. I guess everyone was quite young, really, as well, really. Oh, we were. We were. We were young <laughs> and fabulous. Yeah. 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 In fact, I can show you here a piece of artwork Oh, which yes. was done by Jamie Reed, the um, the great punk artist. This was a for a poster, was it going to be? Or it was proposal because he poster? did the poster. There was a, the, uh, the original poster that came out that they used in England. Yeah. They used a different one in America and everywhere else. But that was and actually Jamie sent that to me as a birthday card years ago. That's how young and fabulous we were. What we did, we had a week um, where we had a read through. And then we literally, because Chris had come from, you know, come from a theatre background, approached, I think, uh, you know, the way you would uh, a play, in that we rehearsed it chronologically throughout a week. Um, so there, there was quite a bit of rehearsal. Um, and, and Peter, did you take a little time to work on the Russian accent? Yes, I, I think I'd done it before in something. So I was, I'd, I'd had a kind of basic grounding, but... I mean, as always with accents in me, I sort of, you know. All film acting is a shot in the dark. You really kind of aim for the target and hope to hit it, but you can't really see it. So um, that, that was very much the case with my Russian. Having three to four weeks to film something, it's not, it's actually uh, beneficial. 
because it means you get on with it. You know, yeah. the, the luxury of time is that Hodgson's law, isn't it, or somebody's law, who is it that all work will expand to accommodate the time allocated to it. Well, mm. if you've got to get on with it, you get on with it, you know, and that's yeah. a great motivator to, um, to get through the day's shots. That's right. But you know what, we didn't actually finish it though in the, in the three weeks That's because right. we had, oh, it was run up to Christmas, we had Christmas off and because we ran out of money. Um, and that was when I think Channel 4, like Film 4 and Palace Pictures, they came in, I think we shot about three quarters of it, something like that. And they came in and came in with more money and then we went back and we finished off, we did like another week or two. So mm. we actually did manage to get it all in, in, in that three to four weeks. It's kind of guerrilla filmmaking because if you're on location in Liverpool, there's going to be people who want to, to put their... To be in it. ...feelings <laughs> worth in, you know. Uh, so quite often that was a bit of a problem. But my only experience of filming at that point was Brookside. Uh, and when we were started out doing Brookside, we were only uh, like two weeks ahead of the game. So that was really intense. So I think for me, probably Brezhnev was quite relaxed. We were, we're such a friends, family, weren't we? All yeah. friends. Yeah, I mean, Fred actually was the only one who'd kind of, who it was kind of the outsider, as it were. I mean, it didn't feel like that once he'd arrived, but he was the only one that wasn't... Was a new arrival. Was a new arrival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but um, there was a lot of um, hanging out together in the evenings and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was great. I mean, Margie and I, I met Margie when I was uh, 15. So, you know, I'd known her, she was a close friend. So it felt very natural just being, you know, being on the screen with her. It just felt like, you know, it wasn't like we had to create the, the relationship. It was there already. Teresa, good God, I didn't recognize you. I know, I look like a little doll, don't I? You look gorgeous, but where did you get all the gear from? Never go anywhere without you, babe, just in case. Chris Bernard, absolutely the sweetest he's, man he's, you could he's hope great, for. But couldn't tell a, him about the first day. <laughs> as a director. Um, well, they were. Chris had very little experience, and I don't think they quite knew the process of, of filming. The kind of okay, here we go, stand by, and in those days we used to say turn over, sound would say running, and then the director would say action, and off you'd go. But we started on the first day. I remember, and there was a sort of, right, you ready? You know, um, yeah, uh, okay, okay, when you're ready, then start. I said, Chris, let's have a little <laughs> process here whereby, you know, everybody knows what's going on. And, uh, and so they adopted that. that yeah. was, I think, he yeah. got it pretty, he got it pretty quickly. He was great, actually. He yeah. was very supportive. I mean, he was a really um, very gentle director, yeah. wasn't he? And Chris has that great uh, skill of, of directors, which is quite rare, I think, to be minimal with your notes, but, mm. uh, but uh, they hit the, hit the spot. Well, Liverpool's not the same now as it was no, then. It's, it's, it's I, I was there recently and uh, mm. the transformation's incredible. Northern powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Then it really wasn't. It was quite run down and um, dilapidated. It was just after Toxteth riots. Mm. That's um, right, yeah. Which were yeah. about inner city deprivation. And mm. so um, it was very much... Um, because we were commenting on that in the film, I think that, you know, there was a, plenty of locations to choose from. There's a lot of pride in, in, in people from Liverpool. I mean, all my family are still up there and, and, you know, certainly they're very proud to be Liverpoolian. But also, in the 80s, uh, particularly, an acknowledgement that actually if you wanted a job, that, you know, you needed to, to go somewhere else, further south in those days. You just take a walk into any back kitchen round here and you'll soon see food shortages. Look, lad, going to live in Russia can't be any worse than living here. So why are you trying to discourage me from escaping? Uh, do you remember the scenes at the, the State nightclub filming then? Were they done at night? Were they in day? Did they, do you guys take over the whole club? Or yeah, did we did. No, we were there during the day filming and then we were there at night. Um, out, <laughs> night dancing. out, dancing, <laughs> dancing. Right. Yeah. So that's we was kind of we just stayed there really. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was, the, home, that, was the, that was the hub yeah. of Liverpool in those. In the yeah, it was great. It was so. It was so fabulous. Yeah. So glamorous. It was. Yeah, yeah it was With great. Pete Burns on the um, on the deck. Yeah, that's right. Because we were actually dancing to "You Spin Me Right Round, Baby, that's Right Round." Right, yeah. That was. That's what we were dancing to. And I don't know what they used in the film, I can't remember now, was it? The Bronsky Beat, Perfect that's it. Beat. Perfect, Perfect Beat. Perfect Beat, that's right, yeah, yeah. The music scene in Liverpool in the 80s was great, so it just, it, that was just kind of a natural extension, I think, of the film. It did mm. some festivals, well, didn't we it? Well, we did, I, I went to Venice, to the Venice Film Festival. Uh, me and Margie and Frank and Chris went there, and that was 
and it was great because there it was just and it was an outdoor cinema which was lovely it was the first time I'd ever been in one of them warm and you know it's really nice and everybody just stood up and started clapping and going like really excited about it that was fantastic it was playing on the cinema in Liverpool for about six months yeah I think everyone was really happily surprised I mean yeah. we we felt good about it in in production but you never know no. with, a, with a with a film you just you know it's well, the feedback from the film, right from the... Because when we'd shot three quarters of it and then it was shown to um, Channel 4 and the, the feedback was instant. The money came in to finish it, came in instantly. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I think we were quite buoyed that we had something that was good and the feedback was always good. Well, actually, I remember um, the phone went <laughs> and I picked up the phone and some bloke goes, um, oh, I'd just like to tell you, you know, you've been nominated for a BAFTA. And I was like, oh, yeah, all right, that, that's nice. And he's like... Oh, aren't you excited? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think, you know, it didn't, it, again, it was what you said about the Oscar. It wasn't yeah. quite the big... I mean, it was a big deal, but it wasn't quite the massive um, event of the year that it is now. And yeah, I went, yeah, it was great. I took my friend Josie along and the two of us went. But, well, I kind of... Because um, I lived up in Liverpool. I think it was... Um, either Palace Pictures or Channel 4 put me up in the hotel. I think it was the Grosvenor House Hotel. So I was so thrilled at being staying, at, you know, being put up at the Grosvenor House Hotel that I went early and, and checked in and kind of... And so I didn't do the red carpet or anything like that. And nobody told me I had to either. It was, which now is like such a big deal, you know. It was like, I just Yeah, kind of, now you'd be like, you know, schooled it, and be, dressed. Know, whereas now I just know, wandered down to the, you know... Tutored, <laughs> the, what the, to the say, <laughs> what to do, where to stand. No. Well, they do all that now, whereas yeah. in those days you were, you know... No, and there was right. no goodie bags. No. You didn't get now, you get goodie bags. Mm. None of that. God, I did my own makeup, my own hair. Yeah. <laughs> and bought a dress and walked down the stairs. And, mm. Yeah, but no, it was, that was fun. It's always a slightly traumatic event, <laughs> seeing yourself 30 years ago, or however long it is. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you were unique in that respect as actors, because you, you, your past is yeah. heavily documented photographically, and uh, so it can be, it can be a wake-up call seeing, mm. um, seeing how, how, un, oh, no, how much we've un aged. young you've become. <laughs> It's nice actually today talking about it is nice because it has it's a distant memory but it's it's brought back happy memories so you know it's a distant happy memory. It was a big hit, and uh, that's always important for an actor, particularly mm -hmm. that it was a British film. Um, we were overshadowed by My Beautiful Laundrette, which came out about the same, right, time, same time and was massive yeah, and was, yeah. you know, it went it's on to film. worldwide yeah. acclaim. Um, but nevertheless, we had our own little bit of um, mm. of commercial success with it, which 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 was great. I think personally for me, um, being from Liverpool and my family being from Liverpool, you know, it's kind of made them proud. So I think from that point of view, it's really nice that when I go home, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's there. <laughs>